Hello, and welcome back to another video. My name is Jake the Genealogist, and in today's video, we're going to be going over the family tree of the kings of Bamum. Now, you probably haven't heard of Bamum before. It's a pretty obscure kingdom. Um, it was located in northwestern Cameroon, as you can see from this little splotch right here. And the kingdom is named after the ethnic group, the Bamun people, that inhabit the area. And their capital is the modern-day city of Fumban. Now, the kingdom actually stayed pagan for the most part throughout its history, even during the European colonization. Now, moving over to the genealogy, uh, Bamum was founded in 1394 by Mfan Nchari Yen. <laughs> Apologies for my pronunciation throughout this video. Um, and he was a great conqueror who founded Fumban and really organized the structure of the kingdom. Now, the kingdom was organized w around what was essentially secretive societies, um, one for the nobility and one for the everyday commoners. Now, Bamun actually practiced and did encourage polygamy, not an uncommon practice in Africa at the time. Now, the culture of Bamum revolved heavily around art, as you can tell from these beautiful hand drawings right here for each of the Mafans, um, which was, they were all created by Ismail Tita Mbuhu. Link in the description. Now, the art of dyeing clothing and other textiles um, was also really mastered by the kingdom, as you can tell from their fancy clothing and their fancy hats as well. Now, in terms of the genealogy, for the most part, the throne passed from father to son, um, with several queens mixed in, as you can tell right here. During the coming centuries, um, Bamun was actually able to trade a lot with its neighbors. However, it wasn't really able to show any regional dominance. All of these nine rulers right here weren't really able to do anything. Um, they didn't expand Bamun's territory at all. And also, as you may notice, uh, some of the reigns of these monarchs are pretty heavily exaggerated. I'm looking at you, Kutu, right here, who apparently reigned for um, about 85 years, which is probably not accurate at all. And um, due to lack of many primary sources, I'm pretty much just go I'm just pretty much going off the generally accepted traditions of the Bamum in terms of dates and names. Um, now, by the time we get to Mbwobwo, right here, things start to change. Um, now, he spent uh, many, much time and effort to actually improve Bamum's defenses, and they were able to actually repel the neighboring Fulani tribe from conquering. And he created Bamun's emblem, a snake with two heads, which signified their prowess at both attacking and defending their territory. Now, Mbwobwo's successor was his son right here, Mbret Kam. <laughs> That's uh, very difficult. And, um... <laughs> He was a pretty short, semi-dictatorish ruler who actually allegedly cut off the legs of those taller than him, but that might just be speculation. Um, and he soon met an untimely end, um, i.e. while hunting. Now, uh, after a short reign by his son, um, the next ruler after a long vacancy was leader of the court, Nguo, who was actually non-dynastical and a former slave. However, everybody really kind of hated this, and um, they chased him out of the city, where he was promptly succeeded by Mwombo's grandson, Nsangu, right here. Now, during his reign, um, Bamum actually submitted to the German invasion of Cameroon, and he was later killed fighting this Nso tribe, and was succeeded by his son, Joya. Now, Joya was a very interesting person. Um, he was the first monarch to actually convert to Christianity, although he later actually converted to Islam, um, which is the religion nowadays as well. Now, he created the first alphabetic writing system of the Baboom called the Bamun script, interestingly enough, and um, he actually respected the German influence and kind of wanted it to intermingle with the Bamun culture by having the schoolchildren learn it and his script. Now, unfortunately, by 1923, um, after World War I, the French had actually conquered, and um, his script actually became banned, and he was officially deposed. Um, he was still de facto ruler, though, and he died in 1933. And this is his name, by the way, written in that Bamum script. And um, he actually 
had a huge legacy on Bamoom. He's arguably the greatest ruler of all time. And um, he preserved their entire history using his script um, for fear of it being corrupted by later European influence. And um, his former palace has now actually been turned into a museum where, where children can actually learn his script to this day. And it's no wonder that he's called Ibrahim Joya the Great nowadays. Now, Bamum's monarchy still continues to this day, and as with other monarchies, it's really only a symbolic tradition. Uh, the current ruler is 83-year-old Ibrahim Bombo Joya right here, named after both his grandfather and his great-great-great-grandfather up here, both great rulers. And that about does it for this pretty short video. Um, so thank you guys for watching and sticking to the end. And I'll see you all in the next one. Goodbye.